All right, everyone, in this video, we are going to be looking at the ViewPress Post, ViewPress Tutorial 6 homepage layout. Let me just zoom in over here. So in this video, we're going to look at what a ViewPress theme is, and then we're going to look at the homepage layout that is provided by ViewPress. So we're going to look at how we can use that homepage layout. Then we're going to take a look at what YAML front matter blocks are. Then we're going to look at some alternative front matter formats. Then we're going to look at the homepage layout changes. So after we specify the homepage layout, these will be the changes that occur. Then we're going to look at how to add an image. Then we're going to look at how to add a title, a tagline, an action button, features, and a footer to the homepage. All right, and then we'll look at what the final homepage layout is going to be. And then we will take a look at some homepage layout notes. All right, to start with, in this tutorial, we will be discussing how to configure the homepage layout by using the options exposed by the default theme, which comes with the installation of ViewPress and is designed for technical documentation. All right, now along with the homepage, the default theme also allows customization for the nav bar, the sidebar, the search box, etc. And we'll discuss those customizations in more detail in future tutorials. Now, before moving on to the homepage layout, we're going to First, describe what a theme is. So if you remember from the ViewPress tutorial 2, why use ViewPress post, a ViewPress theme allows you to control how your project is structured. All right, so within a theme, you are able to create directories that handle global components, components, layouts, styles, and templates. And you can also create files for theme configuration and app level enhancements. All right, so a theme handles all of the layout and interactivity details for your site. All right, now that we have a good understanding of what a theme is, let's move on to configuring the homepage layout. All right, so to see the homepage layout in action, you can take a look at the homepages of the, of the ViewPress site and the CodeMonkeys blog. So right here is the ViewPress site, and this is using the homepage layout provided by the default theme. And then if you take a look at the CodeMonkeys blog, let me zoom out here so you can see it. This is also using the homepage layout provided by the default theme. All right. And let's go back to our post and I'll zoom in here. Now, quick note on if you're using a custom theme. So since the options being used for the home page are provided by the default theme, they may be different if you're using a custom theme. All right, so be aware of that. Now you wanna make sure you start the local development server, which should be running at localhost port 8080 to see the changes to your site. And if the changes aren't appearing after you save them, then try restarting your local development server. All right, so you can see over here, let me just zoom in, that I've already started the local development server. I have the site up and running over here. And over here, I have the readme.md file, which is our homepage. And then down here, I started the local development server by running yarn docs colon dev. All right, so your site should look something similar to this. All right, now let's get into how to use the homepage layout. So to use the homepage layout, you want to open the readme.md file in the docs directory of your project. And then you need to add home colon true to a YAML front matter block at the top of the page. And then we're also going to remove the hello view press line from the file since we're going to start customizing the homepage. All right, so if we come over here, I'm just going to delete this line. And then let me just put in triple dash lines and then home colon true. And then I'll close the YAML front matter block right here and then I'll save the changes. All right, so right here you can see that the readme.md file should now look like this after specifying the homepage layout. Now, before discussing the changes to the site, we're gonna first describe what YAML and front matter are. All right, so let's discuss what YAML front matter blocks are. So here's a link for the YAML documentation right here. So if you're interested, you can take a look at that. Now YAML is a recursive acronym for YAML ain't markup language, and it's a human readable data serialization language that could be used with a wide variety of programming languages. And front matter is structured metadata that allows you to add variables to your pages. All right, so the YAML front matter block also, or the YAML front matter block support comes with the installation of ViewPress and is processed using the front matter parser gray matter. And here's a link to that right there. 
And when you add a front matter block to a page, you need to declare it at the top of a markdown file. So like we have over here, we have that readme.md file and the content must adhere to proper YAML formatting. So between a set of triple dash lines, like in this example, right over here and above. So we have our triple dash lines right there. And then within the triple dash lines, you were able to set predefined variables and predefined variables powered by the default theme. And you can also define your own custom variables. So here's a link to the predefined variables in ViewPress. And then here's a link to the predefined variables powered by the default theme. Now, these variables can then be accessed within the current page by using the front matter variable. And we'll be discussing and adding predefined and custom variables and we'll be using the front matter variable as we continue to develop the site. And if, any, if you have any questions, then you can check out the front matter documentation right here. All right. And here are some alternative front matter formats. So ViewPress also supports JSON and Toml front matter syntax, but we'll be using the YAML syntax throughout the tutorials. But if you're interested, here's how to set the homepage layout using the other supported syntaxes. So for JSON, the front matter needs to start and end with curly brackets. So this is how you would specify the homepage layout with JSON. You have your triple dash lines, you'd open up the curly brackets, and then you would just put home and true here in these double quotes. And then for Toml, the front matter needs to be explicitly marked as Toml. So this is how you would specify the homepage layout using Toml. You'd have your triple dash lines, then you would type Toml right there, and then you would do home equals to true and these double quotes over here. All right, so now that we have a better understanding of YAML front matter blocks, let's discuss the changes to the site after specifying the homepage layout. All right, so I'll just make this a little bit bigger. Now, this is the homepage layout changes. So before specifying the homepage layout, if you would have inspected the browser, you could see the HTML for the homepage would have consisted the following. So you, you would have your title right here in your head tag, which would have said, hello, ViewPress, and then that bar, and it would say code monkeys. And then if you would open up your body tag, you would then see that you would have this main tag right here, the class of page. And then inside of there, you'd have this div class. And then you would have this H1 tag with an ID of hello, ViewPress. And then that would then have an A tag inside of it and inside of there is where we would see hello view press and then we just close out the the a tag and the h1 tag and our div tag and then we also have this footer class down here with the class of page dash edit all right so that's what was inside of the main tag before we specified the home page layout and up here the highlighted lines refer to what gets changed after specifying the home page layout all right, so after specifying the homepage layout, the HTML for the homepage will consist of the following. So we have a title of Code Monkeys now, and then we have our main tag now has a class of home, and then we have a header tag inside of here with the class of hero, and then we have the H1 tag, and that has um, the Code Monkeys, the site title right there of Code Monkeys. And then we have a P tag with the class of description. And then that has our description from our config.js file that we set in a previous video. All right. And then we just close out our H1 tag and our P tag and that header tag. And then we have our div tag down here, um, that same div tag that we had up here has now been moved down here and it's given this class of custom as well as the other classes. All right, so if we take a look at this, if we inspect the page and I'll just zoom in and then I'll move myself over. So you can see right in here that we have the head tag now has the title of code monkeys, which is that site title that we set in the config.js file. And then if we go down to the body tag, if we open this up, open up this, and if we go down here to the main tag, you can see that we have this class of home, and then we have this header class with the class of hero. We have that H1 tag, which is our site title of code monkeys. And then you can see we have our P tag down here with the class of description. And this is the site description that we set in the config.js file. And then you can see down here, we have this div class that now also has this class of custom. 
All right. So these are the changes in the HTML after specifying the home page layout. So on line three, the initial title tag that was set to Hello ViewPress with that bar and Code Monkeys is now set to Code Monkeys. So if we scroll back up up here, you can see that we have this title right here is now set to this title. And then you can see that on line 15, the initial main tag had a class of page and it now has a class of home. And it also has this attribute right here. So if we scroll up here, you can see that this was our previous main class and now our main class or our previous main tag. And now our main tag looks like this. All right. And on line 16, the initial child elements of the div tag are removed since the hello view press line was removed from the readme.md file. All right. So if we come up here to line 16, you can see that the initial child elements so this H1 tag here is removed since we removed that hello view press. And then this line right here is going to get moved down to line 25. So if we came over here, you could see that this line right here is then moved down to line 25 in the HTML file right here. And then we no longer have the child elements that we had before. All right. So Yep, the div tag gets moved to line 25 with that added class of custom as well. We also add in that class of custom right there. And line 16 now consists of a header tag with a class of hero. So up here now on line 16, we have that header class with the class of hero. And the child tags being this h1 tag and this p tag right here. So now we have this h1 tag with the site title and then this p tag with the description and then we also don't have that initial footer tag anymore. So this footer tag that we had up here, is no longer there. All right, so that's what the changes occurs to the HTML after we add, well, after we specify the homepage layout in our readme.md file. All right, so now let's get into how to add an image. So before adding a homepage image, we're going to first create a public directory inside of the .viewpress directory. All right, so if we come over here, and if we open up this, you can see that I'm on, I'm in the CodeMonkeys blog tutorials repository and I am on the tutorial six branch. So what we want to do here is we want to list out, we want to go into, let me bring it up over here. So we want to go into that dot view press directory. So we'll CD into docs and then we'll CD into dot view press. And then we'll list out our contents inside of here. You can see we have our config.js file, but now we want to make the public directory. So now we've made our public directory right there. And now the directory structure for your site should look something similar to this. So we have our docs directory, that .viewpress directory, and then we have that public directory that we just made with our config.js file in there. All right. So the public directory is a static resource directory, which is useful in the following cases. So if you need to provide static assets that aren't directly referenced in any of your markdown or component files, so for example, favicons or PWA icons, which we'll discuss in more detail in future tutorials, or if you need to serve shared static assets that are referenced outside of your site. So for example, logo images, um, if you want to reference images using absolute URLs in your markdown and component files. All right, so this is when the public directory is useful. And in a future tutorial, we'll discuss what absolute URLs are in more detail, as well as relative URLs, the base URL, and how to use aliases. And if you're interested in more in learning more now, then you can check out the asset handling documentation right here. All right, so the image we're going to be adding to the home page is the Code Monkey's full logo. So we're going to create an images directory in the public directory. Then we're going to create a code-monkeys-logos directory inside of the images directory. And these directories are optional, but will be helpful for organizational purposes when we add more images in the future. All right, so now let's create those directories. So we are in, so let's go inside of the public directory, and then we want to make our images directory, and then we'll go inside of the images directory. And then what we want to do is we want to make the code dash monkeys dash logos directory. And you can see right here that we are now inside of the images directory. 
with that code dash monkeys dash logos directory. And after adding, and then we're going to add the full code monkeys logo, which is named code dash monkeys dash full dash logo, and it's a PNG file. All right, so after adding those directories and the image, the directory structure for your site is going to look something like this. You have the docs directory, the dot view press directory, the public directory, the images directory, and then the code dash monkeys dash logos directory, which will have the code dash monkeys dash full dash logo dot PNG file. All right, so here is the full code monkeys logo. So you can download the logo right here from your browser, and it's also going to be available in the tutorial six branch of the code monkeys blog tutorials repository. So if I come over here and then let me save this image and then let's see if I can save this image, I come over here into documents, go to code monkeys, go into videos, view press. And then let me go to docs. And then let me just CD out of this directory right here, CD out of that directory. And then I'm just going to move the code monkeys dash full dash logo dot PNG file. We're going to move that to our public directory should be inside of dot press and then we'll go public and then we'll go images and then we will do code dash monkeys so now if we cd into our dot view press and then if we go inside of public and then if we go inside of images and then if we go inside of the code monkeys logos directory let me just clear this then you can see now that we have our code monkeys full logo dot png file right here all right, now the logo was created using Canva and this site offers a lot of features for free, but some features and images require payment after your free trial is expired. So a good alternative to use is GIMP right here if you're interested in that. And then here are some other useful online image tools. We have Lunapic, this HCTI API, Photo Scissors, um, I Love Image. And here are some useful resources for coming up with color schemes and palettes for your site. So if you wanted to use a different color scheme or palette than the Code Monkeys blog, you have these links right here that can help you out to come up with those. And now it's also important to reduce the file sizes of your images by using compression. So this will help to optimize your site's bundle size, save bandwidth, and decrease the loading time for your images. So Canva and GIMP and some of the other image tools mentioned above offer the ability to compress your images. And then here are some other useful tools for image compression. So you have tiny PNG and this image compressor right here. So you can use those websites to compress your images. All right, so after adding the logo to the site, we can reference the logo in our home page by adding this line right here to the front matter. So now that we've added our home page or our image, now what we want to do is we want to come over here and what we want to do is we want to type out hero image and then the path to our image. So we'll go image and then we will say code dash monkeys dash logos. And then we will do our code. And let me just tab down right here. And this is the name of the image right there. And Notice that you don't need to include that dot view press slash public in the path to the logo because whenever you reference assets stored in the public directory, that gets added automatically. All right, so the readme.md file should now look like this. And let me save this file. All right, so the home page image is added as a child element of the header tag that has a class of hero. All right, so this is what the HTML looks like after adding our home page image. So let me make this bigger. So if you come over here to the website, and then let me just see why this isn't loading. We restart the development server. Oh, I think I messed up the file name. It should be code monkeys 
full dash logo. Save that. Refresh. Okay. There you go. Okay. So now you can see that we have our Code Monkeys logo right here. And you can see down here, if we go into our main tag and then inside of our header right here, that now we have this image tag. And this is with the source to the path to our image directory right there. And this is now the image that will be appearing on your home page. All right, so if we come back up here. Now you can see that you have the do, do, come back up here. Yep. All right, so now you can see that we have that image tag right there with a the path to our logo. All right, so now let's look at how to add a title. All right, so since we already added a site title in the config.js file, we already have a title on the home page, which has the same value as the site title property. So if you prefer to have the site title property and the title on the home page to be different, then you can add hero text home page title to the front matter. So the readme.md file would look like this. So if you wanted to have the, the site title to be different, on the home page, then what you specified in that config.js file, you would then add this line right here to your readme.md file. Now for the Code Monkeys blog, we're going to be using the same value of the site title property for the home page title, so the readme.md file will look the same as before. So we're just going to stick with what it currently is. All right, so here's the HTML with the home page layout title highlighted. So if we come over here and right here, you can see this H1 tag, and that is our site title right there. All right, so that's the title. Now let's move on to adding a tagline. All right, so since we already added a site description property in the config.js file, we already have a tagline on the home page, which has the same value as the site description property. All right, so if you prefer to have the site description property and the tagline on the home page to be different, then you can add tagline your tagline to the front matter. So we're going to update the tagline on the home page from the value of the site description to be this right here, which would be tagline colon let's get down to monkey business. All right, so the readme.md file will now look like this. So if we come back over here, we can then add in our, let's scroll back down to adding a tagline, and then we can add in tagline and then we can type out, let's get down to monkey business. All right, so that'll be our tagline. And this is what the HTML will look like after adding that homepage tagline. So if we come back over here, you can see that that P tag with the class of description that then gets updated to be the tagline that we set in our home page. So if we come back over here, we can see that we have now let's get down to monkey business for the description right there. And this is the P tag right there that got set. All right. So now let's look at how to add an action button. All right. So an action button provides a link to a preferred page on your site and it's placed directly below the tagline. All right. So to add an action button, you need to add action text colon, and then whatever text you want to appear on the action button. And then you also need to add an action link, which would be a link to your preferred page. All right, we're going to add that to the front matter of the page. All right, so this is what we're going to be adding. So we're going to add this action text right here that says learn to code like a monkey. And then the action link will be to this topics page. All right, so if we come over here to our readme.md file, then what we want to do is we want to type out action text, and then we'll type in, well, let me just copy this so I can get the arrow easily. So there you go. So that's our action text. And then our action link is then going to be to topics. 
and then we'll save this. All right, so this is what the HTML is going to look like after adding that action button. That action button. So we're going to have our a p tag right here with the class of action, and then that's going to have an a tag inside of it with a link to topics, and then inside of it is going to be what the value that we set in the readme.md file right there. So if we come over here, you can see that now we have that action button. And you can see that we here is the P tag with the class of action and then our A tag, which is that link to topics. And then it's going to say learn to code like a monkey. All right. So quick note down here is that you're going to get a 404 when you click the action button. So if you click the action button, it's going to show the 404 layout because we haven't set up the route to topics. But in a future tutorial, we'll create the topics page, which will fix this issue. All right. So if you click this, you'll get that 404 page. All right. So now we're going to look at how to add features. All right, so let's look at adding features. So features are text that get displayed under the action button that are used to provide a summary of what your site is about. All right, so you can add as many features as you like, but the recommended number is three. And using three features looks the best with the default styling, and it gives a user a quick introduction to your site. All right, so here's the format for adding features with titles and details to the front matter of your page. So right here, what you could do is you could add this features right here, and then you could do a title, and it could be feature one, and then you could do details with the feature one details, and then another title for feature two details, feature two details, and so on. All right, so we're going to be adding only the feature titles to the home page of the site. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to come over here and then under the action link, we're just going to type features. And then what we're going to do is let me escape out of that. And then what we're going to do is we are going to do title and then we're going to type out learn and then we will do title and then we will type out code and then we will do title again and we'll type out crush. All right, so that's what we're going to want to do is we want to learn code and then we want to crush, right? All right, so let me save this file, come back over here, and let's look at the adding features section. And this is what the HTML is going to look like. All right, so when we add the features, we're going to get this div class of features, and then each feature will then have a div class, and it's going to have an h2 tag with the value that you set. And then if you would have set details, it would have populated this P tag with the details. And then we'll, it'll do this for every single feature. So we have it for our code and then for crush down here. So if we come back over here, if we open this up and then we go and right down here, you can see here are the features right down here. So you can see that we have our div class of features and then this is for our learn feature right here and then we have it for our code feature and then we have it for our crush feature all right so that is the html that gets added when you specify the different features to your site all right so now let's look at how to add a footer so a footer typically contains authorship information copyright information contact information or a site map which is important links regardless of the current page similar to a global nav bar and this is how you would add a footer to the front matter of your page so if you wanted to add a footer what you would do is you would come over here and you would add this line right here so if we copy this line over and then i paste this in I save that. And if you come over to the site right here, let me just go up to this right here. So this is what the HTML is going to look like. So it would just give you this div class, this div tag right here with the class of footer, and then it would just have whatever value that you set right there. So if we come, come back over here, you can see that here is the footer that will get added right down here. And here is that div with the class of footer. And then it's going to say your site's license and blah, 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 with whatever value that you set there. All right. Now, we're not going to be adding a footer using the front matter in the home page for the site. Instead, we're going to be creating a footer component in a future tutorial that sticks to the bottom of the page. 
but if you do decide to add the footer, then your HTML after adding it will look like that. All right, so let's come back over here and we're just gonna delete this and save it. All right, so this is the final homepage layout. All right, so this will be the contents of the readme.md file for the homepage after adding all of the desired front matter. So you have that home true, so that specifies the homepage layout. We have our hero image, so that is our logo right there and then we have our tagline that says let's get down to monkey business so that's right here let me close this out and that's right there and then we have the action text and the action link so that will give us this button right here which will say learn to code like a monkey and then this will bring us to a topics page which we haven't set up yet and then we have our different features and these and these are the titles for it so you've learned code crush so that's down here these are our different features right down there at the bottom all right so the contents of your readme.md file may be a little bit different depending on what metadata you decide to use in the front matter of your home page all right so here are some home page layout notes so some general notes about the home page layout so you can disable any front matter by setting any of the options to null and any content after the front matter block gets parsed as normal markdown and it's gonna be rendered after the features section. And then you can also use a fully custom homepage layout and we'll discuss how to use a custom layout for specific pages in a future tutorial. All right, so in this video, we went over a good amount of stuff. So we went over what a ViewPress theme is. We went over what the homepage layout is. We went over how to use the homepage layout, so how to specify it in our readme.md file. We went over what YAML front matter blocks are. We looked at some alternative front matter formats. Then we looked at the homepage layout changes after specifying our homepage layout. And then we looked at how to add an image. And then we added the CodeMonkey's full logo right here. We went over how to add a title to the homepage, how to add a tagline, how to add an action button, how to add features, then how to add a footer. And then we took a look at our final homepage layout, and then we took a look at some homepage layout notes. All right, so in the next video, we will be looking at, well, we'll be discussing how to configure the nav bar that comes with the default theme. All right, so that is this post right here. All right, so we'll see you in the next video.